When using a mirrorless camera for something like a video podcast, there are some important settings you need to have right. Things like autofocus, white balance, shutter speed, f-stop. We're going to go over all of those. Now I'll be showing you the menu for a Sony camera. So if you have a Sony camera like the Sony ZV-E10 or even the A6400, your menu will look similar. But if you have a Panasonic or Canon camera, your menu will look different, but you will have all of these settings in your camera as well. And before we jump in, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the Riverside YouTube channel. First, let's talk about autofocus. If you're doing a video podcast, especially with multiple people in the room, you're going to want to have good autofocus on each subject. You can try to set manual focus per camera, but with multiple subjects, they're probably going to be moving around, in and out. So the best thing you can do is do eye tracking autofocus. Now, eye tracking autofocus quality differs a lot between camera manufacturers, so double check, try it out first before you use it in a live recording. Now I'm using a Sony a7 IV camera for this shot right here, and it is right now on eye tracking autofocus. That means I can move closer to the camera and my face and eyes will still stay in focus. I can move back and my face will still be in focus. The camera adjusts as I move. Even if I place an object in the frame, it won't focus on that, it's still focusing on my eye. Now if I cover my eye, it will focus on the object I place in front of the camera, and you see as soon as I remove it, it focuses back on me. That's what it looks like when you have good and fast eye tracking autofocus. So here's how to set it. I'm gonna hit the menu button on the Sony camera and you'll see there are many menu options to choose from. I'm gonna go right on the directional pad here until I get to autofocus or AF. Now one of the things you wanna set is continuous autofocus. There are lots of different modes here, but continuous autofocus means it will continually focus while you're filming. As soon as you click an option, it'll kick you out of the menu. So hit the menu button again. And now I'm gonna go down to focus area. This I can set a focus area like center or zone or wide. If you're gonna be using the eye tracking autofocus, I would recommend going to the wide setting. That means wherever you are in the frame, it's gonna try and focus on your eye. Then I'm gonna go to the right one more page. And this is where you wanna set face or eye autofocus. Clicking in here, you'll see face or eye priority and you wanna make sure that that is on. You can even change the subject detection. It can do human animals, depending on your camera model, but of course we wanna do human because we're doing a video podcast. And some of these other settings are specifically for images, but we're focusing on video right now. And now you've set up your continuous autofocus like I have here. It'll focus on your eye, it'll track it anywhere in the frame, and as you move closer or farther away from the camera, it'll keep you in focus. Number two, you really need to make sure your white balance is set correctly. Depending on your environment, the white balance is always trying to make sure that when something is white in the frame, that it is truly white, not a shade of blue or a shade of red, but accurate to its colors. You can actually buy white balance color palette. This way you can hold it in front of the camera and some cameras have an auto white balance feature where you can put something white in the frame and it will focus, or you can just use white balance auto on your camera. Again, depending on your model, I'm gonna go into the quick menu here and you'll see white balance is usually a temperature number like or you can go up to different settings like fluorescence, incandescence, if you're outside and you have things like a daylight or cloudy scenario, or you can try to leave it on auto. One of the issues with leaving your white balance on auto is if the environment changes or your lighting changes or a cloud moves by your window, then it will try to adjust. And if you've been filming for a while, like a long video podcast, then the color temperature will have changed in the middle of the recording. It's gonna be very difficult to edit later. So I would recommend leaving your white balance on a specific setting and not in auto mode. But how do you know which to choose? Experiment with different settings. I just changed the white balance here to a daylight setting and you can clearly see this is a little too reddish. This is not good. You can see the whites are not accurate and most of all my skin tone is not accurate. Here's another extreme example where I've changed the white balance to like a cool white and again, everything's very blue. This is clearly not the right white balance setting for this camera. So experiment with the different white balance settings, try to get skin tones and whites accurate. Now your best option is if you actually have lights where you can adjust the color temperature by number, go to your white balance settings and look for a custom or manual color temperature setting. Then you can actually change this number and if you have lights that also change numbers, set this to the exact number you have for your lights. For instance, here on the Elgato Key Light Airs, I can change the color temperature to an exact number and then here in my camera, I can make this number match exactly. Matching the color temperature on your camera to your lights exactly will give you the best chance at a proper white balance. Another setting you should consider is shutter speed. And when you're shooting still photography, shutter speed has a lot to do with whether you can catch fast action or whether you want blurred images in action. But when it comes to shooting video, you want your shutter speed to be double the number of your frame rate. So if the frame rate on your camera is 30 frames per second, set your shutter speed at one over 60. If it's 24 or 25 frames per second, set it at one over 50. 
Depending on your camera, shutter speed will be adjusted in different ways. Here on the Sony camera, it's adjusting with the dial, and you can see I could change it to 1 over 20, but since I'm shooting at 30 frames per second, I want this to be 1 over 60. We'll talk about frame rates in just a minute, but having your shutter speed double your frame rate will prevent any of those weird lines or banding or flickering in some of the filming. Another major setting is f-stop. This will be the 2.0 or 3.5. You'll see this number on your lens and in your camera. And the higher that number, the less light it will actually let into the camera lens. So if you're filming outdoors and you don't have an ND filter, which we have a whole video about shooting outdoors you should check out, you might need to raise that f-stop so it lets less light in and the picture's not overblown. But if you're indoors, probably if you're doing a video podcast, you'll want that f-stop lower. But the lower the number, the more blurred background effect you'll have. That's otherwise known as bokeh or depth of field, when the background is blurred while the subject is in focus. I typically keep my lens around f2.0, this way the background is still nicely blurred, but I'm still in focus. Keep in mind that number will affect how bright or how much light your image has and the blurred background. For instance, if I change my lens to a low 1.4, see the image is now brighter, a little too bright, I have to adjust other things like ISO. And these are the same settings, but now I've gone to f4.5. You see the image is much darker and it's less blurry in the background. Depending on your camera, f-stop might be adjusted on the lens or via a dial or quick menu. On this Sony camera, it's adjusted by this dial here on the top right, and I can go up. Again, that will make the image darker, less blurred background, or go all the way down to the lowest f-stop. The lowest this lens goes is f2.8. So if you wanna get even a lower f-stop with more blurred background, the ability to let in more light, you might have to upgrade your lens to something like an f2.4, 2.0, or even lower. Now you have to choose what frame rate to film in. 24 frames per second here in the US, or 25 in Europe and in other regions, that's the typical cinematography frame rate. That's what movies are filmed in. Others like to shoot at 30 frames per second because it feels a little more live. Many YouTubers and things for live streams will be 30 frames per second. For reference, I'm shooting at 30 frames per second right now. So typically for a video podcast, I would keep it at 30 frames per second. If you're doing things like game streaming with a video game, you might wanna go up to 60 frames per second as video games really benefit from those additional frames. This setting will be in the film quality settings, whether you're shooting in 4K or HD. Here on the Sony camera, you'll see the record settings, and this is at 30 frames per second at 100 megabits per second. That's the quality of the video. 60 megabits would be the same frame rate, but a little less quality. And here you also see 24 frames per second is available. Your camera might have even higher frame rate options like 120 or 240. You won't be filming those for a video podcast, but if you ever wanna shoot slow motion B-roll or other footage, that's what those higher frame rates are for. Shoot at 120 and 240, and then you can really slow down that footage and still have it look smooth and even. After you've set all of those settings on your camera, the last one will be ISO. ISO is the light sensitivity or how light or bright the image is. And after you've set shutter speed and f-stop where you want, the ISO will help you get the brightness to where you need. Again, depending on your camera, this will be probably in the quick menu, or you might have a direct button like this one, it has the ISO. You would click that, the lower the ISO number, the less bright or the dimmer the image will be, the higher the ISO number, the brighter it will get. Keep in mind, if you're in a dimly lit room or you don't have proper lighting, if you crank that ISO over 1000 and 2000, depending on your camera, the image will start to get grainy or noisy, and that's because the ISO is too high. If you start to see that in your image, lower that ISO number, and you won't have that grain or noise effect anymore. If you have more questions on the settings for your camera, leave a comment below this video. We'd love to help you there. And subscribe to the Riverside YouTube channel. We have lots of content on using your mirrorless camera as a webcam, how to use video switchers, and post-production techniques. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next video.